Well, good afternoon. I'm David Pyle, as you know, I suspect most of you. And uh, I'm pleased to see you all here at our annual meeting. Uh, my first responsibility is to give you a report on the state. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, on, on the uh, state of the uh, association, uh, our condition is very good. Our, uh, our net worth increased again last year by a fair amount. Uh, our, uh, our net income was up about 4% over the previous year. Uh, and none of that, um, none, none of the effect of the fee reduction. I hope you all know about the fee reduction uh, from 2006 and for the foreseeable future, uh, your fees have been reduced by 50%, which is a rather nice cut. <laughs> I also might add that uh, you, you, since the fees are now rather insubstantial and you're all rich, uh, you can uh, get a three-year uh, subscription and save yourself the bother of writing checks over and over and over again. Um, we had, the reason we had an increase in income is largely due to the fact we had an increase in membership. And we had a very substantial increase in membership, some 700 new regular members, some 1,600 new student members. Anybody know why we got so many student members? <laughs> well, they get it free. So, so that, that's the main reason. We, they, they get an online subscription free. If they take the uh, hard copy of the journal, then they have to essentially play, pay the uh, uh, cost of distributing it. Okay? Well, you know, the marginal cost and all that. You all know that. Okay. So, the, so we're in good shape. Uh, we have, you know, as we know, you know, we have uh, relationships with now a number of different vendors who provide us various kinds of services. Uh, the main one, of course, with Black, Blackwell. Uh, Blackwell is a, a very good partner for the association. We don't have the shame that other associations have of trying to soak everybody in the world, libraries and people who contribute, uh, who, uh, who uh, submit articles and so forth. And we never get any friction from Blackwell about our pricing system. Uh, for example, when we decided to cut our price and force members in half, they were most cooperative with that. We had to make a certain adjustment for them to do that, but they were very good about it. We also deal with B Press, Berkeley Electronic Press, and that's your online submission system, and Cam Harvey will become very familiar with it in the not too distant future. And uh, I think Rob will have a few words to say about how it's worked for him. Uh, I can say that they are also good people to work with and not terribly expensive. Uh, a third thing that we have engaged in now and this year for the first time is uh, an outside vendor for the uh, online submission system for this uh, uh, convention, for this meeting. And we'd be happy for feedback from you that submitted uh, about how that worked for you, but uh, Rick will also have something to say about how it worked for him. And uh, that, seemed, that, that relationship seems to be going on well, too. So to sum up, uh, the, the association is in very good shape financially. It's in very good shape with its major vendors, and I see no problems uh, looming in the future. With that, let me introduce our esteemed president, uh, John Kemp. I'd like to echo uh, David Pyle's words of welcome to this 2006 business meeting of the AFA. In addition, I would like to thank David for his extraordinary ongoing service to the association. Every year at this time, just as David has patiently trained a new set of officers for the AFA, the officers turn over, and David must start all over again with a clueless new president and program chair. Yet somehow every year, David is a cheerful, competent, 
unflappable presence keeping the AFA show on the road. David, thank you much. Thank you very much for everything that you do. Three directors of the AFA are retiring from the board this year, and I would like to thank John Cochran, Andrew Corolli, and Deborah Lucas for their service. To replace them, we held, as always, an election this fall. I'm delighted to report that you elected Kent Daniel, John Graham, and David Shafstein to three-year terms on the board, and I thank them for their willingness to serve. In addition, it's my pleasure to announce that you elected Jeremy Stein as vice president of the association. The Fellows of the AFA are a group that includes past presidents of the association and also distinguished scholars who are elected by the Fellows. This year, the Fellows have elected Bob Schiller to join them. I hope you won't find it inappropriate if I add that this selection gives me great personal pleasure since Bob has been the major intellectual influence on my research, including the address I will deliver in a few minutes. The AFA has an ongoing project to document the intellectual history of finance. The association historian, Steve Buser, has conducted extensive interviews with Nobel laureates who have contributed to our field, including Paul Samuelson, Harry Markowitz, Bill Sharp, and Bob Merton. Video and editing services have been generously provided by Dimensional Fund Advisors. We plan to make these interviews available on the AFA website and Steve will continue to interview giants of the field in the, com in the coming year. The association, along with several other professional organizations and universities, appoints a member of the board of the National Bureau of Economic Research. For several years, Rick Green has served as the AFA board member at the NBER. He is now retiring from this role, and I thank him for his service. I'm very pleased to report that Marty Gruber will take on this responsibility in 2006. Marty has a deep understanding of both organizations and is ideally placed to represent us at the NBER. Now, the major item of business that I had to handle during my term as president was the selection of a new editor for the Journal of Finance. In May of last year, Rob Stambor notified me of his intention to step down at the end of his editorial term in May 2006. We'll have an opportunity to thank Rob in a more serious way at next year's meeting, but for now I'll just say that it was a daunting challenge to find someone who could maintain the high standards that Rob has achieved. The board appointed a search committee chaired by Renee Stoltz, and I'm delighted to report that we succeeded in our task. Campbell Harvey of Duke University will become the new editor of the Journal of Finance in June 2006, and he has recruited his colleague, John Graham, to assist him as co-editor. When I was at school in England, we learned a song that I always liked. Since it is based on an episode in British imperial military history, it's not well known in this country. <laughs> the chorus is, the Campbells are coming, hurrah, hurrah. <laughs> in this case, one is coming and one is going, but I think that's just as good. Uh, we've all been enjoying an extremely successful conference program organized by Rick Green. I'd like to thank Rick for his hard work on the program, congratulate him on its success, and invite him to present his report. Thank you. Well, business is booming here at the annual meeting of the AFA. Uh, we had once again a record number of submissions, uh, 1,087 up slightly from uh, the previous year. Um, we have two more sessions allocated to us this year by the ASSA. Uh, so there were a total of 44 uh, AFA sessions, uh, and there were three sessions organized jointly with other professional groups. Uh, our acceptance rate this year was 14.5%. This was down slightly from the 16% of the previous year. Uh, each session was organized by a member of the program committee. These are the people who actually make the program uh, uh, success it is each year because uh, they make the intellectual uh, judgments and do the hard work. Uh, my job was just to sort of dish out lots of paper uh, to each of the uh, session chairs. Uh, the program committee was drawn from 29 uh, different universities this year, 
and each session chair handled about uh, 20 papers. So they had to get through a great deal of material very quickly uh, and turn things around fast. Uh, and all of the program committee members took their responsibility very seriously and responded in a timely manner which made things uh, manageable for me and I'm very grateful to them for their efforts uh, and their willingness to serve. Uh, I categorized my paper, the papers myself um, into subfields uh, and there's a table in my report that'll uh, be in the journal and on the web page uh, uh, describing this distribution. Our acceptance rates varied across fields from about 7.5% uh, to 23%. This was the first year we used the SSRN uh, uh, program management system to handle the submissions uh, and the review process. Um, and this generally seemed to work quite well at the levels uh, in which you all were interacting with the system. I got a few, you know, frantic emails from uh, somebody who was uh, furiously trying to submit 60 seconds before midnight. Uh, but we managed to get all these uh, problems sorted out uh, uh, reasonably quickly. Uh, to close, I want to thank my predecessors uh, as program chair and especially John. Um, they were all very supportive when I uh, needed advice or uh, information. Uh, and then I want to remind you again uh, how much David Pyle does for the association uh, in many areas, um, but uh, the ways in which he is valuable become particularly uh, transparent to you when you get to be program chair and there's a great deal of stuff you need to do and you have no idea how to do it uh, and he uh, helps you along and I appreciate his help immensely. Okay. Thank you. Next I would like to ask Ken French, the vice president of the association, to give his report. I sort of have it easy. All I have to do is give money away, and it's not mine, it's yours. So I have the pleasant task of giving money to PhD students as travel grants to the AFA meetings. Um, this year we awarded 40 travel grants to PhD students. Um, those of you who are not aware of it, we actually have decided to award 50 grants next year, so there's 10 more. Feel free to nominate one student from each school. Um, and what I'd like to do at this point is invite any of the recipients of the PhD travel grants uh, just to stand up and so we can see who you all are. Is there anybody here? Oh, good. I was going to be a little disappointed if nobody showed up. <laughs> well, welcome. <laughs> and we also instituted a program this year for travel grants for scholars from less developed countries and awarded 10 grants uh, to those scholars. And basically, um, those are actually faculty members at institutions in less developed countries. Um, and again, if you're unaware of it and you're here, we invite you to nominate somebody from your institution next year. So um, again, I'd like to have those people who are here to stand up and be recognized. So if you're one of our scholars from that group, Great. Welcome. So thank you all very much. And like I say, it's very much fun to give somebody else's money away. So thanks. Rob Stambaugh will report on the status of the Journal of Finance. Well, I'm happy to report that uh, 2005 is another good year for the journal. We received 1,377 submissions and resubmissions, and uh, 1,021 of those were new manuscripts. Uh, both those numbers again exceed the previous year's totals. And in 2005, the journal published 86 articles written by authors whose primary affiliations include 92 different institutions. Uh, this year, the institutions with the most JF authors uh, were the University of Chicago and University of Pennsylvania. The journal's visibility remains extremely high. Uh, the articles published in the journal in 2002 and 2003 were cited 7,051 times during 2004. 
a total that ranks first among business and finance journals and fourth among all economics journals uh, behind only the AER, Econometrica, and JPE. Uh, that total implies an average of 3.1 citations per article, which again ranks first among business, business and finance journals and again fourth among economics journals. Uh, turnaround time remains good with two-thirds of the editorial decisions taking less than 60 days and fewer than 10 percent taking over 100 days. Uh, the backlog of unpublished articles is holding pretty steady at slightly longer than a year. Uh, in fact, it contains only six more articles than it did three years ago, although you might recall that in 2004, making the August issue full length raised the journal's page budget by 120 pages or about three or four typical articles. Uh, thus, the net growth in the backlog over three years is effectively only about two or three articles. Uh, the BE Press system continues to perform well for us. Uh, I think we, our submission flow stress tested this system rather quickly, I think beyond the, uh, um, the, uh, the degree foreseen by the uh, people at BE Press, but they've responded very well in, in, um, in uh, modifying the system over time to accommodate the, the, uh, the high volume, uh, speeding things up in a number of ways. Uh, the next order of business on the plate with them is to get them to implement our three-year document destruction policy window, and uh, uh, David Pyle is going to uh, take the lead negotiating with them on that. And, and let me just take this opportunity to thank David as well for all the jobs he uh, he helps me out with over over the years that uh, can make make my life easier. Uh, it's been said before the journal reflects the collaborative ed efforts of a great many people. Uh, the associate editors do a wonderful job performing the roles I've asked of them, which continue to be giving me preliminary assessments of papers, potential suitability for the journal, and suggesting referees. Uh, last year, the journal relied on over 760 referees uh, who made time in busy schedules to provide the type of diligent and prompt feedback that continues to play a vital role in the journal's success. I'd be quite remiss if I were not also to mention that the editorial assistant, Wendy Washburn, is a tremendous asset to the journal. Not only is she vital in keeping things running smoothly in the day-to-day -day submission and review processes, but she very ably supervises the copy editing and the pre-publication interface with Blackwell. Uh, this is my last opportunity as editor to address you all publicly, even though I'll be continuing as editor through June 30th and dealing with many of you as authors and reviewers well after that. Uh, clearly, uh, you, the members of the association, <coughs> value the journal highly, and it's been a great honor and privilege for me to have been entrusted with its care. I have no doubt the journal's future will be in good hands with Cam Harvey, and I hope that I can be as helpful to him during the transition as Rick was to me.